Uh, bonjour and what is up? A new year has begun and today we want to answer the question how to start as a filmmaker in 2022 because um, 2021 was a good year, right? Right? Let's just keep this one positive. So, is it too late to start? How do I make money as a filmmaker? Do I have to go to film school? How do I get my first clients? Where is the best place to start? Today we'll do our best to answer all these questions as realistically as possible. So stay tuned. This video is for beginners who wish to learn how to film or how to get into filmmaking. This isn't to say that advanced viewers won't find something valuable in this video. So um, yeah, enjoy it. Hello, my name is Claudio and I'm a filmmaker from Germany with over 15 years of experience. But first and foremost, I would like to clarify something. And please do accept my apologies for bursting the bubble. However, if money is your sole motivation, you should look elsewhere. Very few filmmakers are wealthy and even more tragically, few can make a living doing it. Because filmmaking is about passion and not money. There are better alternatives to make money quickly, but filmmaking is not one of them. I warned you. I told you this video is going to be realistic. So I was fortunate enough to be able to turn my hobby into a job and earn a living doing it. But it didn't happen overnight. It took me a long time and I made a lot of mistakes along the way. Mistakes I could have avoided. And before you go on sad switching off, I have a plan for you to speed up the lengthy process and make 2022 your filmmaking year. Ask yourself the following question. Who am I? And what do I want to do? I personally love photography and I always thought that I wanted to be a photographer. But lo and behold, I've turned into a filmmaker. And that takes time. That's why it's important to start as soon as possible. Regardless of whether you have doubts or not, whether you have a good camera or not, just start and get to know yourself, who you are and what you want to do. How else can you be able to provide something to someone if you don't even know where your strengths are? Is it color correction? Is it editing? Maybe you're good with lighting, VFX. No one can answer that but you. So get started, fail as quick as possible. Because in the beginning, you'll have to be everything. The set designer, the DP, grip, everything. The jack of all trades. Are you afraid to fail? Good, we were too. So just get started. Do you have any doubts about being seen or being heard? Good, we had that too. So start now. Are you fed up with your monotonous job and want to pursue your passion? Good. Get started. Okay, DiCaprio, but where do I fucking start? I'm so glad you asked. Well, the typical response is to simply use your cell phone. And I hate that answer. I'll explain why you should only use your cell phone if you're in such dire straits that you can't afford anything else and you have no one to turn to for help. Then, okay, go ahead and take your best camera. But nothing compares to the motivation that comes with your first camera. And it's super important that you have fun. So buy a nice camera. I started with a Canon 500D or a T2i, which I bought through summer jobs. I also worked at the university as a tutor in operating system and was able to save money. Where there's a will, there's a way. Another reason why I advise you not to use a cell phone, you learn, you learn. <laughs> <laughs> you learn nothing about aperture, focal length, ISO, etc. You know, there are apps like Filmic Pro where you can set up some stuff, but if you want to take it seriously, buy a DSLR or a mirrorless and start with the basics. A camera with an interchangeable lens is also helpful because you can play with different optics. So buy a camera and lens that are affordable for you and get started. I'm not going to make a list here, we can discuss that in another video. But a personal recommendation from me would be the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K, which you can also buy used. Together with the Sigma 18 to 35 mm you can get a solid start. It's not the cheapest combo, but it's the cheapest combo you can ever compare to an Ari Alexa. Uh, you know, a camera that costs like 40k. Just the brain, I mean like the body, you know? But there are enough options, well, under 500 bucks. So a little research will help. Do your homework but you've probably done it already. The first clients, okay. So you have your setup ready and now it's time to get your first clients because passion alone doesn't pay rent. And unfortunately, this will mean that you'll be working for free at first. And I know that sounds kind of odd, you know, like you have to get your first clients because passion doesn't pay rent, but you have to work for free. Let me explain. Keyword, 
portfolio. Now, it's all about collecting as many references as possible. Some jobs are paid, most are not. Some jobs will cover your gas costs, but in the beginning, you'll probably have even more costs. Imagine this. You're getting married in four weeks and you're looking for a photographer or someone to film your wedding. You Google for someone or someone is recommended to you. So what do you do? You look at his past work. If he doesn't have anything to offer, you probably go to the next one, unless he's willing to work for free or at least very, very cheap. You have no idea how many videos I produced for a hundred bucks. However, word spread rapidly and many approached me. So look around in the family. There's bound to be someone who wants a video in some manner. They might not even be aware of it. Maybe your uncle has a store, you know? Maybe your sister or cousin is getting married. And that's true across the board, whether it's weddings or food commercials, product videos. Just start filming something and build your portfolio. Your first clients have nothing to lose if you offer it for free and few will say no. This way you can also find out what you enjoy the most. You can also raise the price over time. I had a customer on the phone and we were discussing some project details, you know? So he says, we're gonna offer you like 500 bucks. And I'm thinking like, what? I'm getting paid to do this? I was stunned because I wasn't even thinking about money. Instead, I was thinking I'll make the best video possible for the project. You know, I would have done it free, but 500 bucks sounds nice. So that's what we're gonna talk about next escaping free projects your portfolio is built you have created a showreel you have reached a point where you can honestly say now i can charge for my work if you're not there yet then you still have some free work ahead of you but if you would hire yourself and you are confident and sure that your work is dope then it's time to let a lot of people down because you're asking for money I had to learn this the hard way. When I started charging for money, all of a sudden, with a few exceptions, all of my clients bailed. I mean, it's kind of obvious. They take your work for granted and get used to the fact that they don't have to pay for anything. So deal with the fact that the clients who helped you build your portfolio are gone. Some of them remain loyal and understand that at some point you have to earn money doing it. So they continue to book you. What remains, however, is someone who can say, I know someone. Of course, referrals also depend on how you communicate to your client that you can't continue to work for free. If you're always friendly, nothing will go in the way of your recommendation. Let's also discuss if you'd be better off working as a freelancer or as an employee. In any case, you should request a fee as soon as possible. So people stop getting used to you being a cheap hooker, you know? How much should I charge? How much money you should charge depends on the project, of course. How big, how long, there's no one size fits all answer. But you can estimate it approximately. If you want to go full time, think about the following. How much money do I need monthly to cover my costs? This depends of course on your situation, where you live, and if you're alone, do you have children, do you have contract loans, etc. Let's say you need $3,000 a month. Let's add another thousand dollars to cover the new purchases because, well, you want to grow, right? And you have monthly costs like Premiere Pro and other stuff. So let's say four thousand dollars a month. Then think about how many projects can you do in a month without suffering from burnout. Let's say we have three medium sized projects in a month. That would be approximately one thousand three hundred and thirty three dollars per project. Of course, it can be one big project or many small ones. If you realize you can't make ends meet with the number of projects, you're asking for too little. If you work on a $500 project for two weeks, you're asking too little. One big project for 4,000 or eight small ones for 500. But it's your life, your bill. Figure it out. Find out what you can afford. I'm also aware that there are times when you have more and other times or months when you have no projects at all. And I know that. For two months, I'm swimming in money and the tide goes out. As a freelancer, it can be difficult to constantly get lucrative jobs. So, do you want to be your own boss or would you rather work for someone? Being a freelancer sounds great at first. You're your own boss, you can do whatever you want. You can invest your money the way you want, but you have to be able to deal with people. That's why I found out for myself that I won't be happy as a freelancer. You don't have a steady income and you have to be nice and sweet to everyone. And I can't do that. That's 
that's my weakness and I have to be honest about it. I can't deal with people and I hate being in that submissive position where no matter if you're right or not, you have to give in. I'm very introverted. I don't like interacting with people and I don't like discussing, especially when it comes to creative decisions. I have a very short fuse and that has often been my downfall. I earned more as a freelancer, but the months where it didn't go so well, were hard, you know, because I invested my earned money directly back into equipment. For me and my family, it was a better decision to work as an employee. I'll always get my paycheck no matter what. I don't have to chase anyone. I don't have to chase my money because yes, customers don't always pay on time and some don't pay at all. Been there, done that. I don't have to worry about jobs, accounting and so on and so forth. I have my nine to five job and that's it. I make money with my hobby and I have time for my family. So again, ask yourself the question, can I always put a smile on no matter what? Only you can answer that. Okay, cool. What about film school? <sighs> no, absolutely fucking not. You do not need film school. Film schools are, in my opinion, the biggest fraudulent turd the world has ever invented especially here in Germany, but also in the US, you know? They're so expensive and I'll never accept the fact that you have to go into debt for education. Education should always be free, no matter if it's Harvard or MIT. And in a time where you have the whole knowledge of mankind in your pocket, you know, I'm talking about this, I find it more than absurd to spend up to 40K. What many would now say is, well, what about networking? You know, you get to know people and uh, you make connections and you get to work with... Bitch, that's what we have social media for and it's free. You won't meet anyone in college who can make your work better. You make your work better. Yes, it's good to know someone who can put the word in for you. But $40,000? What kind of networking is that? Is Spielberg gonna suck my dick, huh? Do you have any idea how much gear you can buy with $40,000? With 40K, you can rent and test any camera you want, okay? So, no, you absolutely don't need fucking film school. Ah, getting carried away now. But no, you don't need it. You can learn everything you want for free on YouTube or anywhere else. You know, there are also cheaper masterclasses you can buy, you know, like there's a masterclass from Scorsese that he teaches you about, I don't know, film, like screenwriting and whatever, lighting. And you get that from someone who's been making films in the industry in Hollywood, like you can't beat that. And I don't know, it's about 10, 15, 20 dollars a month and it's totally worth it. It's not only Scorsese, a bunch of people who've been there, done that, they can help you out. So no, you don't need film school. Film schools just give you debt. But if you don't give a shit about money, then be my guest. Do whatever you fucking want. Working for exposure. Mm -mm -mm. Working for exposure. Okay, so this is good and bad. And it depends. Here's an example. Someone offers you to work with David Fincher, but without payment. So what do you say? Well, of course you say no and move on with your life. No, of course not. You sell your kidney, feed your family and do everything possible to land a job. You know, with more jobs, you get picky and you suddenly have an ego and that's okay, you know, because that's what you've been working towards, right? But the opportunity train doesn't come often in life and it continues on time. It doesn't wait. So it's important to recognize real opportunities. So if you now accept another job for free, but in returns, it brings you like 10 huge jobs, then it would be stupid to say no, right? The problem is recognizing real offers. So I was often asked to do work for free and in return, I would get a mention in the description. That was Michael Jackson, then I'll probably say yes. But if someone would comes with like 10K wannabe influencer and says he wants the best video possible and all I get is exposure, then I say, fuck you. No one is gonna scroll the video, read the description and see who made the video. If you do accept such a job, make sure that your brand is visible in the intro or whatever you want. Otherwise, just say no if you have the feeling they're not genuine. So, some final words about filmmaking and being a filmmaker in 2022. Filmmaking is a difficult task. It's aggravating, it's costly. You'll face setbacks and you will wonder what the point of it all is. However, there comes a time when you can look back and say, I did it, I made it. That's my vision, that's my work. And it turned out great. 
It's never too late to start anything new. You are the mastermind behind your own fate. So write, shoot, edit, and repeat. See you in the next video. Bye, bitch.